Alright, so, I'm gonna keep it real. I kept off this vid for a bit because I was torn. I could have made this a damn near 30 minute vid and talked in depth about it or honestly just summarized some things without going into too much detail about everything. And honestly, I'll flip the coin, so this is a quickie. Think you might have tossed it a little too far? He doesn't know the meaning of restraint. Kiss my ass. So I was rewatching some shows I used to like, and I ended up going back to Assassination Classroom, which is going on to being 11 years old now since its initial release is in 2012. Holy shit, 2012 was over 10 years old. Fuck, I'm getting old. <clears throat> uh, anyway, it's actually surprising how little I hear the show being taught about now. Not necessarily underrated as much as I like to say, but more underappreciated nowadays. Like, okay, this character is pretty much distinguishable among a number of different designs in anime and or manga. Not to mention that this scene has been made into a meme for years now. And also, it's not like this show never did well. If anything, I'd say it was one of the more popular shonen titles out there with the 2010s. Being one of the best-selling manga series listed in a 2013 lineup with series like Terraformers, Blue Exorcist, and Attack on Titan, among others. It released over 25 million copies of the manga, had a two-season anime adaptation greenlit, a live-action film which, if nothing else, tells you just how popular this series is, as well as an inclusion in the game J-Star's Victories Versus, which had an assortment of Shonen Jump characters from Naruto, Luffy, Ichigo, and Goku to Reborn, Baby Beal, and bo 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 so, yeah, saying that the show is underrated is anything but the truth. However, saying that this show hasn't been talked about all too much and honestly should be a bit more, I'd say that's more accurate in my book. As I believe this show to be, without a doubt, one of the best Shonen Battle series. Haven't I mentioned that? Yeah, Assassination Classroom absolutely counts as a Shonen Battle anime. Honestly, I imagine anyone who hasn't watched this show would most likely give me weird looks and say, What? That show with a tentacle monster and students killing teachers? How the fuck is this on par with other shows? This doesn't even have a power system. I mean, intellect, hand-to-hand, -hand, tactics, and special techniques. Not to mention the cast is full of characters that are ostracized by everyone around them. All those combined sound like stuff out of a shonen battle anime to me. And if you really want to break down the genre, Shonen is just a demographic, to market to mainly teens and young adults. Honestly, I feel like the reason some people may not put this in the same ballpark as, say, The Big Three or even current Shonen Battle series is, in my opinion, mainly because of its setting. It's high school. Usually, series of this kind incorporate a high school, but it's mainly just a playsetter for other events outside of it all. Even series like My Hero Academia are literally about kids learning to become heroes, but let's be real. People remember this show because... And I'm not gonna act like I don't know why this show doesn't really get much attention nowadays as opposed to something like, say, Full Metal Alchemist. Studying sucks. Class sucks. As someone from the West, I admit I don't want to watch a show about teens studying for their exams to get into college. Shows like that I'll gladly walk away from. So... Why am I giving this a pass? Well... Context, really. All right, people. Let's get started, shall we? Ready, aim, fight! Assassination Classroom is about an entire class trying to kill their teacher before the year ends and he blows up the world. In the meantime, for whatever reason, He's decided to teach Class E, which is full of students that are isolated from the rest of the school body because their grades are so low, they literally do not know what else to do with these kids. Oh, and to top it off, the school has a system that encourages a prejudice around E-Class being not just stupid, but lesser and weaker because they, well, basically have no future. They're the butt of the jokes, they're the outlet for the other students' fun, and Class E has to just roll over and accept it, because the students, teachers, and even the principal all encourage it. This whole stupid system is a travesty. Easy does it. The boy can handle himself. My students know how to deal with bullies. In comes Koro-sensei, 
the sentient tentacle monster, highly intelligent, capable of breakneck speeds that is threatening to destroy the world unless his class, full of kids that are perceived as stupid and useless, is taught by him to excel in their studies and learn assassination so they themselves can at least have a chance to kill him. They get their futures back, they save the world, and get a fuck ton of money. Did... Did I not mention that? Yeah, they all get paid cold hearted cash. 10 billion yen as a matter of fact. So, to recap. An unstoppable monster, threatening to destroy the world, is teaching a class full of students who are thought lesser of because of their intellect on paper, to do better and prove the schools wrong, all while he's giving them a chance to kill them with the reward being enough money to take them wherever they want, have a new home and be set for life. So, how do you make them studying seem interesting? Well, aside from visual representations, the reward. Imagine seeing everyone you knew at school who treated you like shit, only for them to later see you coming up in the world and making something of yourself. That slight tinge of prideful satisfaction? Ain't it a thing of beauty? Yeah, yeah, I know, gotta be the better person, but come on. That group of people that took time out of their day to make fun of you, years later either wasting their lives or they just peaked in high school, and you at least got a fucking job. Like, nigga, you can't tell me you don't think karma's a bitch in that moment. Like, like you can be a little petty about that. It's okay, I get it. It's better than the fucking alternative. Now, in regards to Koro-sensei, I know what some of y'all are thinking, and... Sorry, that don't work. Literally. Actual weapons don't matter. They gotta use rubber blades and BB guns. And you might think, wait, what if he's just faking? I mean, they're fake weapons. It's not like it'll do any real da- <laughs> HOLY SHIT! <laughs> JESUS CHRIST! I mean, if this ain't enough reason for you to look at episode 1 if you haven't already, I mean... I'ma keep it real, Chief. This ain't it. But anyway... Honestly, the series covers its bases pretty quick and sets the difficulty level to the max. But what's interesting is the duology of Koro-sensei. In the first episode, the first real scheme they show is some students using a grenade and sacrificing one of their own classmates to get it over with. They added gunpowder to give it more of a kick while neglecting if their own classmate is actually alright. Not only did it not work, but the teacher protected the student and clapped back by putting everyone in a bind by reminding them that he can kill everyone they know and love before they even realize what had happened. The name played off my house! What I like is how layered this whole scenario is. 1. Carl Sensei will put his students before his own well-being. 2. He gets pissed if anyone in the class thinks I'm sorry, you have a better idea? 3. If he really wanted to, he could just kill everyone and be done with it. And four, it shows the strengths and weaknesses in intellect with the students already. The tentacle monster that can move faster than bullets got slipped up by one student's sneak attack, but that attack damn near cost the class one of their own classmates. And that's the thing that pushed Koro Sensei up to the line. Like, if it didn't work and he didn't go out of his way to protect him, and didn't bother to lecture the class on why they were idiots, think about it. How many kids would this dude have to kill before he realized it ain't gonna work? How many children would he have to go through in order for this to be a success? Yes. Uh, well, one, well, one in this case. Forget the Unabomber, he's just a child bomber! In the first episode, it already tells us that, one, this ain't gonna be easy. And two, achieving a goal is no excuse to throw people under the bus. The series isn't simply focused on a black and white story of heroes and villains. There's something more it focuses on above all else. The failure and the value of being wrong. I know in this day and age, people on the internet seem to have a major gripe with the matter of being wrong and even being held accountable for being wrong. Meanwhile, in the real world, I've dealt with failure most of my life. Hell, if you look at my stream, twitch.tv slash the over half of the fucking games I've done with my friends end up with me eating dirt. You can ask my friends, my win ratio is ass. But, y'all who stuck with me for more than five minutes already know, I don't care. 
me and my friends just be chilling and being dumbasses. Wait, 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 I'm sorry, Sign. Were you prioritizing yourself and your own well-being over watching my content? How fucking dare you? How dare you take care of yourself? <laughs> How dare you prioritize yourself and your well-being, your health and your nourishment over my pointless <laughs> shit fucking content? How dare you? Why did I decide to get off topic and plug my Twitch? Well, for one, to talk about how failure isn't as bad as some of y'all wanted to make it out to be. Nobody knows everything. Sometimes we just get shit wrong and we gotta recorrect. And next time, we change it up a bit. We may not always get it right, but we learn from where we get it wrong. And two, I, I mean, I like the company. I, I might sound like I'm just like making people who got nothing better to do with their time mad, but... I, I think I had a point in what I was trying to make, but anyway, I play games, react to stuff, and chat about stuff in my life. Like, the door is open if you just want to lurk or chat. Anyhow. The show introduces a lot of characters, but with the time it has, just about everyone gets their time in the spotlight. Like, second season has them all in finding midway through it, but they all got their reasons, and we see more towards not just how much the characters have grown, but... Also, the reality of what some of them are actually like. For example, take Karma. The dude shows up and just does this. Okay, on one hand, the dude plays the part of an assassin to a T, but on the other, I do have to wonder just how much work he put into all of this. He cut up a knife and taped strips to his hand. He somehow made an anti-sensei butterfly knife. Like, that's not nothing. The dude put work into this. That's how you know someone fucking tries, when they make this shit look easy. Unless you be doing this. <laughs> this game is we just got awful. Fucking Sega, fix your fucking games. Also, around the message of failure, the dude kept doing the same damn shit and got checked like the broken fucking record he was. This man coasted on luck on a test and ended up taking an L. By the time they had to do a narrow test, he pulled no fucking punches. Everyone in this class ended up dealing with being wrong and failing, be it assassination or the classroom. See what I did there? But around the end of the first season, everyone learned. They dealt with trial and error. And as time passed, more and more, they got better and better. And much of that is thanks to Koro Sensei. One of the students has this dream of being a professional baseball player, wanting to be like a star baseball athlete. Carl Sensei actually went out of his way to... I, I, I don't know. But he went out of his way just to tell his student, you're not going to be like them, and that's fine. Why strive to just be an imitation when you can be an original? This dude left the country and met a sports pro for the sake of his student and to help him. And some people think teachers ain't shit. Like, shut the fuck up. I'm real. I, I used to be like that. I was a fucking dumbass, but also had, like, no fucking help until I was, like, 20. Depression's a bitch. Shouts to my high school science teacher, though. She got me a sketchbook and liked my art. Met some pretty damn good people there, too. High school had its perks. Don't make me go back. The assassination classroom has a lot going for it that isn't just the premise of kids killing their teacher, unlike what some school districts would lead teachers and parents to believe. For every failed attempt, there's a lesson to be learned around the corner. For every mistake, there's a chance to try and make up for it. For every misstep, there's a moment to improve. For a series about teaching kids to assassinate, it focuses a lot on preparing the adolescent for the world and how, if you put the work into it, you too can have a future. Yeah, sure, you can rely on luck or money or even privilege, but at some point, your foot is gonna have to be put in the door. And all that luck, money, privilege won't mean shit when the door is getting slammed in your face. And if you don't know how to do that, well, that's the point of this show. It's okay to accept the fact that you don't know stuff sometimes and want to learn. Take it from someone who's been ignorant about a lot of stuff in the world. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. I'm still learning about life and trying again where I failed. I'll probably fail again and 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 again. But all I can do 
is take it and continue to learn. And honestly, in this day and age, in both the real world and the fantasy world, with the way people tend to be, really makes me think Assassination Classroom is underappreciated. Don't take his stubbornness so personally. Every little birdie needs to leave the nest at some point. That's the way of things. Students do not die on my watch, ever. Take that to heart for the next time you jump. You must believe yourself worthy of your target. That means taking pride in what you do, in yourselves and each other. All of you are more than the sum of your parts. Or not. I, I don't really have anything else for this. The show is good and I want to talk about it. Fuck Twitter. Support me on Ko-Fi. Let me know what you think. I'm fucking tired. Love y'all. Thank you.